Uh, first of all, welcome to our call, uh, our talk, uh, GitOps with Open Telecom Cloud, uh, Terraform, Helm, and Argo CD. Um, we have to hurry up a little bit. We only have half an hour for a lot of topics. Um, what will we show? Uh, best breed, um, how we help our customers in Open Telecom Cloud that they can utilize very fast our platform with a, uh, with a Kubernetes deployment. Um, well, we will um, install all stuff with a Terraform and then um, install on top of our Kubernetes cluster um, Argo CD with the help of Helm. And well, that's all we need uh, to reach a GitOps environment. My name is Uli Schneider. I'm Customer Success Manager at the Open Telecom Cloud. And with me today is Victor. Yeah, thank you very much. My name is Victor Getz. I'm the CTO. I'm this guy here. Uh, and I'm founder of ETS Consulting. We provide cloud native uh, solutions and cloud native consulting. And today I want to just to show you our best practices stack and what made us like uh, very successful in the last three years. So uh, this is the agenda, short introduction into GitOps. Uh, then we show our big uh, picture, like how we are doing things in our GitOps approach, so uh, like our company secret, you can call it. And uh, it consists of Terraform and Argo CD, GitOps approach, but you can use also Flux CD. And uh, then later we have also some time for questions. So what is GitOps? GitOps is a standardized workflow for how to deploy, configure, monitor, and update manage infrastructure as code, like long sentence. But in short, uh, you keep your state inside Git, and uh, this is the only point of truth. Uh, if you want to look a little bit deeper into uh, what GitOps is, uh, I recommend uh, Weaveworks. Uh, they can read a little bit more about GitOps. But we want to do the real stuff, yeah? We want to make some coding session here. So uh, now I present you our architecture, how do we do things. And our big picture is like this. We use HashiCorp Terraform. And what do we do with Terraform? We set up our cloud infrastructure, our OpenStack. Uh, we use their Open Telecom Cloud. And we set up their stuff like Kubernetes cluster, load balancer, and all the stuff uh, based on Git. And uh, that we will do today also. Uh, okay, now I have my, all the cloud stuff, I have my infrastructure stuff, uh, but how do I get my services online? Uh, so how do I deploy some things? There is a, a GitOps tool uh, which is called Argo CD. You can also use Flux if you want to. And Argo CD does a pull deployment. That means it takes a look at some Git repository, and we call this Git repository infrastructure charts repository, and deploys everything what's inside there. We use this time Helm, uh, and it installs the Elastic stack and the Kafka stack then inside our Kubernetes cluster here. It's like super simple and straightforward. Okay, but then you are like, okay, what is with my Vue.js applications or my Kotlin application or my Python? Uh, how do I handle these things? It's also pretty simple. So uh, what we do, we have a different repository regarding to the teams. Maybe I have also more repositories where uh, we call it every time app charts repository. And that means there's our business services inside, Vue.js, Kotlin, everything like that. Because we just have half of hour today, we will not cover this part. We will focus on the infrastructure stuff. So time to Terraform. Um, what we will do today is uh, I show you our open source code. So basically, all the code what we are having, what I will show you today, is all open source. You can just look it up. And we have here a project factory for Open Telecom Cloud, uh, which uh, you can choose your module for your clouds, what you want. You see here there's multiple modules, uh, for example, a database, a private DNS. Uh, you need maybe jump posts for security and stuff like that. And then you're just building like Lego bricks. You're just taking the pieces together, and then you have your cloud up and running. Uh, here's also example how to use that, the quick start. Uh, there's also some best practices, how you name things, uh, architecture example uh, based on, uh, yeah, on the Terraform uh, stuff, how we do this. And yeah, and here are the current available modules. So, and here's also a link, which is called OTC Terraform Template. This is uh, like a blueprint for you. So when you're starting with Terraform and Open Telecom Cloud uh, or Open Stack Cloud, you can use such a blueprint to start very, very easily. And this is also what I will use now. And uh, for the infrastructure charts, uh, if you remember, we have some uh, Kotlin services, ingress controller, traffic, and stuff like that. Uh, there we have a different blueprint, which you can also use. And then you can just combine them both together, and then you're finished. 
So, um, yeah, what we'll do today is uh, let's take a look here. You see here we have a completely, open, uh, a completely empty open telecom cloud, and now we will get stuff done. That means we will deploy some things. So I, uh, made, I used this template now from GitHub, and I will go into open infra dev. We will set up a dev stage, make Terraform in it. It initializes the module. Basically, I didn't change almost anything here, uh, almost nothing here. So Terraform apply. I, I need to apply it now because we need to install uh, the node pools. We need to install all the elastic load balance and stuff like this. And we have really just a half hour. So that's why applying it now. And now we will uh, discuss uh, what is done here and what kind of modules we are using. So um, we go back to our slides. And now I give over yep. to Uli. Well, um, in general, uh, first we need to install uh, some typical services uh, from our Open Telecom Cloud. Of course, we need uh, some network stuff. Um, it's uh, VPC, which is like an open stack uh, a router on a network, and we install a subnet. And we need an elastic IP that we can access the cluster from outside. We uh, provision a load balancer. And the thing which takes around um, to provision eight until 10 minutes is our Kubernetes engine. It's called the CCE, the Cloud Container Engine. In addition, we thought we use some additional uh, functions. And of course, I forgot, even uh, we install some additional services on our CCE. We install also directly some plugins. One plugin is for the auto scaling, which allows our CCE instance doing scale out and also scaling. So we have the possibility that we do a node scaling, which is really important for most of customers, not only pod scaling, but also that your cluster have the chance to grow and scale in. So next slide, please. So we also use um, a an, an private DNS zone inside for our services, inside our VPC. And for accessing from outside, we also use a public DNS, both services uh, from Open Telecom Cloud. And for uh, this showcase, we use, uh, use also a um, bucket of our object storage service where we store for this demonstration the secrets and use it for some um, injections um, to make uh, this all possible in half an hour. Yeah, thank you very much, Uli. So, but how does it look like in the code, yeah? And uh, let's take a look. So we see the cluster is still creating here. It will take like 10 minutes more. And that's why we will jump quickly through the stuff which we did here and how the templating looked like. So first, you have some environment variables. Uh, you need the access key, secret key, domain name, and all the stuff. Uh, here, you can see uh, somebody who's familiar with Hashikov Vault. I use here Hashikov uh, Vault for uh, the secret injection into environment variables. Uh, you can use also something different. Um, we use every time the name, it's called context. So uh, based on the context which you are on currently, uh, maybe it's a customer name, the department, or whatever. And we have here the stage name. And uh, with such a setup, I can uh, set up a cloud very, very easily, and I can deploy a lot of resources. And it, this is not some hello world thing. This is really what we use. And we uh, do there like thousands of containers we are hosting with this stuff, and we are really, really fast. We can just delete everything and boot up everything from scratch without any problems. And we, made, uh, we have a very, very high uptime also, and the customers are very satisfied with this kind of setup. So here the upper part is for uh, the infrastructure, and the lower part is for Argo City and uh, for the Kubernetes. And uh, yeah. Let's just jump into the modules. So what kind of modules did they use? I used exactly the modules which Uli described, because you need every time to have the same stuff. You need a Kubernetes cluster, private DNS, public DNS, and all this stuff. So you see here, I used these modules here. And uh, yeah, you can just choose whatever you want. So if you want to use maybe jump post additionally, you just add your uh, jump post module. Um, Victor, one question. If I want to use, an, uh, for example, an, um, a database instance, an, an RDS service of the platform, so the only thing I need is this uh, piece of Lego brick, yeah. this uh, piece of code, inserted it, and I do not need uh, to know the, the com complete code of the exactly. This is right? 
You choose every time the, the Lego brick what you want to have. For example, we have also RDS module, which is PostgreSQL or MySQL. You can choose whatever you want there. Um, what we do also here, we make a DNS entry. So we manage the DNS uh, by Open Telecom Cloud. And you see here there's admin dot and then svar context. Context name in this time is open infra because we are on open infra. And the stage is dev, so our domain will be admin dot open infra minus dev and then this part. So uh, yeah, let's take a look. You see the cluster is still uh, booting up. It takes a little bit of more time. Um, so yeah, we, we go quickly through the other modules then. Uh, we have here the last part is the encrypted secrets bucket. It's very, very easy. So we just save it inside the bucket, which is based on S3 protocol, and there we save all the secrets. Why do we need that? Because we split every time infrastructure from the Kubernetes part. So we have Terraform for uh, Open Telecom Cloud for building up the infrastructure there, but at some point we need to switch over to Kubernetes. That's why we split it, and this is some kind of mechanism. In the real production, you would just use Sashikov Vault or something like that. So what is in the Kubernetes part, uh, what we do there? So we are reading from this bucket again and reading all the secrets which we need. And also we tackle the Docker IO problem with the pull rate limit. Uh, maybe you are familiar with this problem. If you're booting up some services, then you get into Docker rate limit. And they use a very, very cool service. It's called Registry Crats. It injects your Docker hub secrets into every service account on the whole cluster. And so you don't need to worry about anymore about pull rate uh, limits. And that's here wh where he is reading the environment variables and then creates um, and installs this registry creds. Okay, but let's take a look what we need to everything to have for Argo CD. So we switch back to the slides. So what do we need to install Argo CD? Uh, what we're currently doing is uh, we install the Helm CRDs. Uh, Who is familiar with Helm? Uh, these are custom resource definitions. And uh, if you're not doing that, you need to have to build up a dependency tree. If you have like thousands of services, uh, they're all depending on each other, and so you need to make this tree somehow. Uh, it makes your life pretty miserable. Uh, so that's why we installed the common and most uh, used CRDs up front so that we don't have this dependency and everything can just spawn up and boot up as uh, it would like to. Then we solve also this Docker Hub rate limit problem like I explained with the regacy creds. And the last point is uh, just to deploy Argo CD. Uh, the deployment of Argo CD is very, very simple. We have there also Terraform provider. And the Terraform provider is this one here. This is the Bootstrap Argo CD. And you can see here uh, that you need to provide some information there. But there's a whole documentation about that. So the important thing is just two, this two num lines, uh, number of code. So this is the URL, what we want to watch for, which gets repository. And uh, below the part uh, is what it will install. So everything on the stage, the stages, dev, infrastructure charts will be installed. And um, yeah, let's just jump into the different repository. And let's take a look what's inside there. So inside this repository, I dropped here some local helm charts because it's really easy to use, the local helm charts. So you can just drop here any chart. For example, you drop here Grafana chart, and then you go to the values.yaml here, and you just declare it like this. So Grafana uh, namespace, for example, monitoring. This is what I did today for the Elasticsteck. And then you make commit and push, and then Grafana will be automatically deployed. And this is really, really cool because you don't need to uh, consider, yeah, where, uh, who I need to give access from a kubectl config, how to, to uh, give uh, to my developers the kubectl config and all the stuff. Well, if we are finished this, uh, we will see all this uh, stuff inside our Kubernetes cluster up and running. Exactly. Uh, if we do everything right, like this is like the hardcore stuff because we do everything live and uh, it's not something mock-up or something like that, we should see everything under our domain and the admin domain. And also my code, which I'm using today, is uh, also everything publicly available under my GitHub account. So, um, yeah, let's talk about the services which we need. So, uh, we will install Argo CD, but what will Argo CD install then? So we need, if we have a customer, 90% of the cases you need every time the same stuff. So you need some kind of certificate management. So, for example, you need set manager with Let's Encrypt. You need some kind of routing, microservices routing. There is traffic absolutely 
uh, cool for. So uh, that's why we use today traffic. Uh, then I chose also Kafka because we have like a lot of services which you can choose from, but I chose Kafka because three years ago, one uh, DevOps guy told me, yeah, Kafka setting up super difficult with Zookeeper and everything like that. And uh, so I was like, yeah, I will show today how easy it can be done. And uh, so today we will then boot up Kafka. Uh, we will also use Elasticsearch with Kibana, Elasticsearch, and Filebeat for the logging and monitoring stuff. And we use also a simple uh, example, some Nginx page, uh, where we just uh, have the links to all the services. And also what's very, very common, we need some kind of gateway. So you want to protect your cluster, you want to protect your domain. That's why in this case we just choose a very simple basic auth domain, uh, basic auth gateway. But in real uh, production you would use more like an ODC proxy. That's what we are using, for example, with Keyclock or something like that. So these kind of services we want to deploy, and let's do it. Oh, cluster's up and running, nice. So let's deploy also the other stuff. I go now to oh, the... One question for yeah, uh, sure. Victor. So now we have done all the stuff um, done on Open Telecom Cloud that we can continue with our deployment on top of Open Telecom Cloud. Exactly, exactly. Now we, right. come, we, now we come to the Kubernetes part, which has nothing to do anymore with Open Telecom Cloud. So I make here Terraform init. Terraform apply, and then should deploy me Argo CD, and Argo CD will take a look at the Git repository, and everything what's in the Git repository it will install then. You can see also the stuff which is installing here. For sure, in real production environment, there comes a lot of top uh, also. You need pipelines uh, for the Terraform. You need maybe TerraGrant and all the stuff, uh, and all the testing and all the stuff. And the Hashikov Vault a secret injection should be used and not some kind of bucket. But in this case, we will just use the basics so you have something to work with. So it's now currently installing. In the meantime, while it's installing the services, uh, I'm providing every time my customers uh, some kind of shell script, like really old school. Uh, so we have here called shell helper, and there we have some functions which makes your life a little bit easier. For example, to get the kubectl config and all stuff. So I source again my set info with environment variables, and source then also my shell helper, uh, and then I can just take a look if my cluster is working. So I say get ELB public IP, and I see my public IP from the open source already there. Okay, let's get the kubectl config. Get kubectl config, kube control, get nodes. You see on the age that it's three minutes old, so it means this is our cluster currently. Let's take a look what's currently happening on our cluster with get pods minus A. You see Argo City is currently installing. It takes uh, several minutes, maybe two. Oh, it's already up and running, cool. And you see Argo City is installed, and now it will take a look at the other repository and will uh, install everything. I made a watch now here, and you can see here on the line here that the admin page is already loaded and some other services also coming online. Um, yeah, so we wait a little bit. Like, this is the cool thing. Sometimes you just need to wait in the DevOps department. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> we don't have popcorn here, so, but. Yeah. And so. We can try your Netflix. Netflix, Netflix yeah, yeah, yeah. It's my favorite. On left side Terraform and doing all the stuff, right uh, side Netflix. Really cool. <laughs> and um, I'm still way much faster than over the UI. Oh, UI, good point. So let's refresh this page. Let's see if we have something here. You can see there is a cloud container engine. There is some volumes are already there. Uh, we have uh, load balance on all the stuff. And yeah, we have already a lot of things online. The question is now, uh, does it work also with my domain? And do I have a DNS entry? So that's why we're going back again. I will abort this one very shortly. And say now NS lookup. Now we get first the ELB public IP again. So this is our public IP. And then we make a NS lookup admin. What did we say? Open infra dev guardians of the otc.com. It's matching. Cool. So 
let's take a look. Um, page not found. Wait, 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 wait. We have not HTTPS. Sorry to disappoint you guys, but it should work. <laughs> So the certificate's not there yet because uh, we have, um, we go to Let's Encrypt and most probably uh, the certificate's not loaded yet. But it will come up shortly. Let's take a look at what is happening currently in Argo City. So we have also some convenient function here. Uh, you can also use it, uh, look it up in the Argo CD uh, configuration and documentation. And here we use this one. So we have here the password. And then we go to admin. I log in here. And you see already, like, this is every time, is, this is a beauty, you know, like this astonishing, you, you just deploy Argo CD, and there's sometimes hundreds of containers online. It's, this is joy. <laughs> it's really cool. <laughs> so. Oop. So, yeah, guys, you thought we would not get the certificate, but there we have a basic OWS gateway, and we have also our certificates. Cool. So let's take a look at all the stuff which we're having currently. So we see here the applications, and you can see Elastic Stack is still booting up because Elastic Stack is based on J4M, and we all know J4M needs a little bit of time, yeah? So uh, we need to wait a little bit. But Kafka is there, and let's check just the URLs. So Argo CD was already working the URL, so we need Kafka, Traffic Dashboard, Kibana, and Elasticsearch. So Kafka, you see two nodes are already up and running. If we have a connector there, we can just connect and uh, write messages. Uh, if you want to get some more information about Kafka, you can also look at our YouTube channel. Um, we have also here traffic routing. So these are all of our routes, and uh, yeah, they're working. Uh, Kibana is not up and running yet. You see, but you see, there was 404, not service unavailable. It means the container is currently booting up, but it's not uh, meeting the health check yet. And Elasticsearch uh, most probably is also not up yet. So we will just wait a little bit, and then it should be up and running. In the meantime, while it's now booting up this, all the stuff, um, I think we will go forward with slides, and later we will check again if everything is up and running. So yeah. I hope you really have some takeaways for today. So. Um, yeah, what did we not cover today? Uh, for sure, I made uh, Terraform local, because originally I thought I would get like one hour and I could show you way much more stuff. But uh, based on the half hour, I need to make a Terraform local state. Normally, you need to save the state of your cloud into an encrypted bucket or somewhere else safe. There's multiple options how you can do that. And yeah, that's it. Um, so basically, we came to the end. So these are the links to all the stuff which I showed you today. Uh, I would be happy if you have also some architecture which you would like to discuss with me or something like that. I would love to get and uh, in talk with you and chat with you a little bit because I really love architecture. I love open, open stack and also, uh, um, yeah, cloud native. It's really cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> 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 okay. you're, you're too fast. I wanted to say <laughs> thank you very much, and now I'm giving over to Uli. No, don't worry. Uh, th thank you. I hope you have a lot of fun. Um, see what we can reach in half an hour uh, with doing uh, some uh, stuff of automation. Well, uh, some additional information. It's the same barcode. Uh, you'll find um, all the links um, we used here in our Open Telecom Cloud uh, community. Um, you can also meet uh, my colleagues at our booth at B1. It's outside in the front of, and when you come in from outside. And well, I would say thank you, Victor, again. Thank a nice pleasure. Good, good show again uh, together. And I hope it was um, interesting and impressful for you. Thank you. Now we're finished. <laughs> Are there any questions so far? So, so it was really, really fast, I need to say. If you want to have the slower version, it's on YouTube. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, yeah. Yeah, we have uh, a version about one hour yeah. uh, on the YouTube um, channel. You will also find it in the OTC community if you want uh, to have uh, it a little bit slower. N no questions? I have a mm. question. Like with the secrets, you have it on the Azure Core Vault, and then when you execute them, they come from there to your machine, to your, uh, to your shell file. 
Uh, yeah, I have. When I do this in production, sorry. Okay. Yeah, sorry. When I do this in production uh, I want to, do, to put them not to Git, not to, not to my Git pipeline. Mm. Or should I do it straight to the OTC cloud? So um, when I run the vault command, you're going to pull the secrets from the Ashcore vault. Yeah. Uh, I want to do this from Git pipeline or yeah. from, from, the, like, from inside of the OTC cloud. Okay. Uh, I will repeat the question very shortly. So uh, I used HashiCorp Vault to get the environment variables. And uh, basically, uh, your question was how to do it within the pipelines, how to uh, get the best approach. The, the best approach. Uh, it depends on the case, I need to say. But what we are doing, we have a GitLab integration uh, for, um, for I think, for HashiCorp Vault. But I need to look it up. And basically, we have there some uh, token which runs out, and then uh, GitLab gets every time a new token, and then uh, the GitLab runner gets every time a new token, which runs out, and based on this token, we get then the secrets. This is the approach that we do. Okay. Yeah. And another question, sorry. Uh, when you, when you uh, use the Kafka, was this uh, for the Argo, or was this for, uh, just for your um, it was uh, just I an application. I, I need to repeat. <laughs> uh, I will repeat the question again. Uh, so, uh, when we used the Kafka, was it for some ca for Argo CD or was it just for demonstration? It was just for demonstration. Yeah. So, we don't need Argo CD. You can even uh, supply Terraform through Argo CD, which is also a very interesting approach. Uh, okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any more questions? No. Then thank you very much and see you. Bye. I was struggling with the video, but it doesn't look so uncomfortable.